What is good? We're back. The draft has come and gone, and now it's time to react. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the reaction I had. It was hungover. <laughs> we hung out with the patrons, but now we're here to uh, kick it live with the public here. We got some skyrocketing winners and dumpster fire losers. Poof, 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 poof. <laughs> uh, we're going to uh, go through, you know, kind of round by round ish and then just you know go through positionally and and see what we liked what we didn't like and you know these are just kind of your initial reactions there's a couple of guys that i gotta go back and watch because it's like hey running back was kind of deep for me R wide receivers were like you got to a certain point let me see what happens same thing with tight ends mm -hmm. um so now there's you know a list of a not very not very big and that's exactly why i didn't do it uh because i'm not going to go back and watch all these guys but i will go back and watch you know the mingos mm -hmm. and um there was somebody else in there that I needed to watch. Oh, uh, Jalen Reed. Yep. Definitely need to go check him out. So, But we're not here to necessarily break down every single pick and every single player. Just react to kind of what's happened and, and where we see it kind of, you know, in the fantasy landscape. Um, and then we'll we'll have another uh, little veterans show uh, following this one. So that's why you need to like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. So, you know, that one will come right into your, uh, right to your little fingertips uh, so you don't have to stress your little head about what is that next show coming out? I'll just let you know. All right. So right off the rip, we got the quarterbacks. We pretty much kind of knew what was going to happen. A lot of smoke and mirrors there at the end. We got three quarterbacks in the first round, two running backs in the first round. So, you know, eat your heart out running back haters and mm. uh, draft value uh, guys. If I had to hear one more about, do they not understand positional value? Mm -hmm. Like just scream into the echo chamber a little more, dude. Like, we understand you guys are the smartest guys in the room. And, they, of course, they, they the Detroit Lions and the Atlanta Falcons do not understand positional value. How could they? They just are a billion-dollar operation. They they just don't understand it. They But Josh Larkey, you know, he knows better than everybody oh, for else. Sure. For sure. Um, it's all about your tone. And Casey. that guy works really hard. I'm not I just – he was the first thing that popped up into my – because he was really out in full force. I, he, he does some good work, not – I had I didn't go on to Twitter <laughs> one single time all draft weekend. It was glorious. Yeah. So four wide receivers in the first well, round. For, first and off, one tight we got to get one skyrocketing player, which not for us because we already had him at one too. But if yeah, Anthony well, Richardson hasn't skyrocketed up to the top of your draft board, pass after Bijan. Not going crazy here, but if he's not one two for you, he, he ought, if he wasn't before the draft, he should be now. Right. Because um, drive capital. So and good landing spot. That's like that was like my favorite spot when right. we did our thing. That <laughs> right, was like where I wanted him to go. Right. We when we did our pre-draft thing, I said I hope it's Indy. Um, yeah. And and it, it was, and he was the one too. Adam Levis going there. Once you smoke, stayed. Stroud's stayed, falling. Stayed in the uh, in the top five there uh, with Richardson. So that's that's great. I, I would for sure take him over the other two guys. The other two guys may be a little safer, but I'm we're playing fantasy. He's the Konami. Uh, cheat code and that's what you want out of your uh, you know the, the all you know that's what I want out of my out of my um, quarterbacks there you know I want I want somebody that can run around and, and be athletic and you know you can you can hate all you want about all the you know well he can't play quarterback and it's like well that's 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 TBD you know there's a lot of quarterbacks in that come out that you think can play and can't uh, and, and that happens real quick they why we like the landing spot is you know the organization has been slipping for me a little bit they used to be really in my good graces about you know what they were doing and then yeah. you know they bring in a new head coach Steichen who you know I know this has been said a lot too but you know he has developed helped develop Herbert and then he went and helped develop Jalen Hurts so he's got uh you know and and, and the way that that the Eagles kind of did that and and formed the system around Hurts and now the other piece of the ingredient that's that I don't think is missing with Richardson is is he gonna work like Hurts worked because that's what made Hertz work, putting in the work. Sounds like a Yogi Berra Allstate commercial um, or know, a Geico commercial. What is it? Affleck commercial. He he clearly he hurt, hurts. Work. Hertz clearly had talent. It just needed. I to don't be know refined. if anyone's going to work as hard as Jalen Hurts. I mean, just because 
Anthony Richardson has elite learning level. I don't know if he's going to be the first guy in, last guy out. I, I would. I. It's from everything that I've read, seen, heard, talk people I've talked to. He he has that kind of uh, drive, and and you know that's Shane can kind of put that in his head. Like, look, this is what Jalen did. We just yeah. took, look where he is right now. Mm-hmm. Look at the contract I just got him. Mm. You know, come in here. Let's work hard. We're going to put the pieces around you. We're going to build the offense to your strengths. We can be a little more run heavy. We got a great running back behind us right here. Let's 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 we'll take baby steps into this thing. We ain't got to go full bore and, and put you in a bad situation and get your confidence all fucked up. Cause that that's, that's how you're going to have to approach us. Now, will they go right in with Richardson? It would, it would seem so, but I don't, if you wanted to go Minshew for a little while, I don't think that would be the worst either. I'm not, I'm not really upset about that. I'm not going to be upset with my Anthony Richardson at one, two, if for half the season, Minshew plays it really no I'm definitely not gonna be upset about it I'm actually just I'm excited at the possibility at all that he hits the field you know like they basically said that he's gonna play this year and if maybe it's not right off the rip but and and that might be good or bad but if 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 he's got his head on right then I don't think he's gonna get broken by not being no no I, 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 I don't I'm one of those guys that I don't think it's really ever that bad to sit. If you got the right coaching staff and the right people to develop. No, I mean, like, come in and not be successful is almost worse than sitting, right? But I don't think that's going to, like – you also, you could say that if a quarterback, if you can't make it through your rookie year getting beat up and then your confidence is shattered, you never had enough to begin with. Yeah. Maybe. Potentially. Um, so, you know, I, I think Richardson at the one, two, but that was, that didn't really change for us. We were kind of there. Right. I'm not sticking him at the one, one. I know there's some of that being floated out. I can't really say, you know, that I necessarily could say hard disagree, but I'm just going to take this, the sure thing and Bijan and the points that he could put up year after year and the value that he's going to hold. Yeah. And Bijan is like the best prospect since been prospects, since been prospects, since been prospecting. Like, right. You got to, if you have a chance to take Bijan and you don't, or you trade it, I think you're dumb. What are you doing? Take the best prospects well, since I, been I, prospects. I, I'm, I'm okay with you trading it if you're not ready to win, but that's another discussion for another day, which we've already yeah. had. So, yeah, um, Bryce Young and TJ Stroud both go both to kind of where we expected them to go. Uh, a lot of smoke around Stroud there, but he ends up going to Houston. Good for them. Yep. And they trade back up and get Will Anderson. A lot of discourse there, whether you like that or not. And really, it seemed like for what came out today was or yesterday even. I don't know when it really came out, but they wanted to take Will Anderson first with the second pick, but then they would kind of be you know paying more to paying more to come up to get the second yeah to to get the second pick so you know the way you would flip that around you know would you pay an extra first for the quarterback that you wanted next year you know but I know Will Anderson is the name there but it made more sense for them to do it that way so you know I guess that you know logically that makes pretty good sense so is what it is Houston Carolina or uh, Arizona is already in really good position to control the draft next year um, so good for them. So there's the quarterbacks. I'd go Richardson, Young, Stroud. Which we just took Stroud at 1 4 in a Superflex right. rookie draft. Uh, so those are on the board. And then Bijan goes off the board. And, you know, I'd, if, regardless if you like NFL teams drafting running backs in the first round or not, it doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck. They took him. I think it's a great landing spot. Uh, I, that's this is clearly kind of a big part of what they want to do yes Algier was good yes th- do they have some holes on defense I guess so they, they plugged that some of those up with some free agents that they picked up all throughout the offseason they traded for Jeff Okuda uh, from the Lions who seemed to fall out of favor with them um, so you know I, I think I, I like where the, the where the air where, where Atlanta's heading we'll see if the quarterback can play they seem to have some faith in him we'll see yeah he's a winner from this um, but you know, I think that's a di- winnable division uh, for Atlanta this year. Um, and Bijan could be, you know, a big part of that uh, week in, week out. So uh, that, that's what they wanted. They wanted their Derrick Henry and they got him uh, right off the rip here. So, you know, that, I think that he stays the 1-1. One, one. Uh, they also know. said he, I mean, not just Derrick Henry, but a slot receiver, you know, listening to the head coach talk on a – yeah. Morning show was saying that they don't, you know, they almost view him as a positionless kind of player because he's such a good receiver and he can yeah. line up in the slot, which we know he, you, he Arthur Smith, right. want to run the ball. But. And he didn't do a ton of that anyway, uh, but he was, he was, he's a good receiver. So, well, was it you that was, who was telling us about the catches he was making in practice that never actually even made it to the field? Uh, it wasn't me. Might have been Waldman. Yeah. Um, but no, great player. There's nothing to be upset about there. And then Jamar Gibbs goes, 
uh, 12 uh, ahead of all the wide receivers to Detroit. And people are saying, well, why don't you just take Bijan there at six if you really wanted a running back? Well, they got paid to fucking move back. And then they still took their guy Gibbs. They said they were like, going to take Gibbs at six. Right. So, so it's like, what? that's what they wanted. That's the guy they wanted. That's the guy they liked. You know, maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. This, they wanted Gibbs because of the style. What, what, what I think, you know, again, they don't understand positional value. Like people are saying, oh, they could have traded back again and got Gibbs. Could they have? Maybe I don't not. fucking know. No. Like, how far back do they go? How far back? Like, they probably had to fall back another substantial chunk of picks. Six, seven, eight, maybe. You know, it's not as easy as you think to just yeah. move back two picks at a time. That, yeah, if I could do that in every rookie draft, that's yeah. exactly what the fuck I would do. I would just keep moving back two at a time if I could. But it's never that easy. Um, and then sometimes your guy gets snagged right out from underneath you. Right. And um, they didn't want to miss him. And they didn't want to miss him. And they got him. And Great and landing spot. An outstanding landing Skyrocketing spot. Skyrocketing up. For, I mean, he was, he was already really high, but if you wanted to say he was above JSN, now I can't argue with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I love the landing spot. I love the offensive line. There was all those charts, which I know the people love charts all of a sudden. A lot of charts everywhere for all the analytical guys. It's like, see, I told you, look at this chart. Is it in graph form? It's a graph, yeah, usually. Could we get it into a sheet as well? If we get a graph, chart, chart, sheet combo. I, I, I don't know, but... <laughs> If, if the blocking was good, Jamar Gibbs was awesome. And if it wasn't good, Jamar Gibbs wasn't great. Well, guess what? The Lions have a great line. So the blocking can be good. I bet that correlates uh, to the, other players. <laughs> maybe all of well, them. Well, that's what they were kind of saying. That he wasn't, correlation, he wasn't not causation, a great, drink. He wasn't a great between-the-tackles runner. And everything needed to be good for him to be a great between-the-tackles runner. Whatever. It's going to be pretty good. Uh, and they also have a system in which... Uh, it's, I know it's not Brad Johnson. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Uh but their offensive coordinator elected to stay another year. Um, I'm, I'm, I wish I could remember the name right off right now, but I'm blanking on it. Um, he elected to stay another year. He would have been a hot head coaching candidate. Ben like, Johnson. Liked where they were going, uh, Ben Johnson. And so, you know, they took this guy. They're going to scheme this guy. Uh, you know, Swift last year, I believe, was like I, – I, I failed to look this up because I was looking up a million different things. But I think he averaged like 15 points per game um, in, in the games that he was actually on the field. And – Jamar Gibbs is hands down a better receiver uh, and, and a better route runner. Swift seemed to fall out of favor with them. Uh, just they, they were fired up about getting Gibbs. I would assume that the usage is going to be fucking awesome with uh, with Jamar Gibbs. And yeah, Montgomery is there. You know, did they think they were going to get Gibbs necessarily coming into this draft? I don't know. You can't bank on that. So they signed Montgomery. Did anybody really think that Gibbs was going to come in here and just take a spot and be a 25 touch a down or a, a game player? Like, I, I just, I don't saw, I didn't see that anywhere. I didn't see anybody saying that. So the fact that D David Montgomery, who's in there, which I love David Montgomery. I think David Montgomery is a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for and a pretty decent receiver. And now he's going to be on a good team. So there may be some games where Montgomery's hot and, you know, takes some opportunities away from Gibbs. But for the most part, I think Gibbs is going to get his shots. Um, and he's a home run hitter, which Montgomery is absolutely 100% not a home run hitter. Like they just kind of function a little different, a lot different. Um, so I, I love the Gibbs landing spot. Um, I, I think it's one, kind of a best case scenario uh, for me. Montgomery can mix in there, do some of the dirty work. Gibbs can get in there. They can scheme him up. Um, you know, Pete, could it hurt St. Brown? I don't, I don't know that it's going to be quite like that. You're missing Jamison Williams for six games. We'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm really excited to see how they scheme this guy up now. Now, uh, the OC, if, if all goes well again, and, and what you're banking on here is that they're taking the next step forward. We've talked about this with Jamison Williams, talked about this with all that, with, with the Bears or uh, the uh, Lions offense. You're hoping that they take the next step forward. That's why you're kind of banking on some more Lions guys. It's not the Lions of old anymore. You're hoping this offense goes one more step forward. Great offensive line, golf another year. You'll get Jamison Williams back. You have him in training camp all year. You got the Sun God. You got Swift. Or you got uh you got Gibbs and you have uh David Montgomery and and now you took Laporta which now you have another you know pretty good receiving weapon there which you were playing musical chairs at tight end after you got rid of Hawk last year, um so I love the Gibbs landing spot I'm not upset about it at all and if you want to say Gibbs over JSN, wheels up for me I'm fine with that. All right, what stat were you looking for? Uh, Swift points per game. 
ten point two. Uh, oh, yeah. this isn't PPR. Yeah, but. and and there's I think. There's yeah, who well, fantasy pros, man? I can't find everything I want. There's a caveat place. to that too. I think you got to take out something, but at one point I had it. I had the stat somewhere, and um, anyway, it really like. If you watched what thirteen point seven, if you watched what Swift could do in that offense at times when healthy, you know, and and Gibbs is 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 a superior player. If I could, if Gibbs could average me thirteen to fifteen points per game, I'm I'm all right with that out of my rookie running back, and it should just continue to get better. Um, so uh, keeping it moving here, not getting too bogged down with with anything. JSN first receiver off the board to Seattle, um, you know. Some people weren't as excited about that. I, I don't. It doesn't doesn't move the needle one way or the other for me. I'm still in on Jackson Smith and Jigbo. We can get really short sighted with with dynasty here in a hurry of that. There's Lockett and there's there's uh, DK and Fant and you know they just drafted another running back and maybe they want to be a little bit more run heavy and it's like yeah I mean I could see that but. JSN is is going to be just fine, and I saw somebody kind of liken him to Godwin, uh, as when Godwin was starting out, like you know, was Mike Evans, and I think Djax were maybe there when he first started, and then all of a sudden he shifted into a little bit more of a primary role, and has just been fucking wheels up whenever he's healthy. Uh, for an, even when he wasn't healthy starting this season, he still absolutely murked it. And JSN is is that kind of guy as well, um, and I'm you know. Um, no movement really for JSN for me uh, coming into this. No, like you said, maybe you could slide Gibbs up above him because he got such a good landing spot and high draft capital. Uh, not necessarily the capital, but you know he he went early in the first round. We well, weren't sure if he know, was even going to go first round. He, the the capitalists like the capital until it's mm-hmm. on a running back that 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 they maybe didn't like the running but or the spot on, and then they want to talk about positional value. So it's not you know, but. Draft capital at twelve. Come on, baby, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Um, so he he he's shot up a little bit anyway, and and could maybe overpass JSN. But you got Bijan the three quarterbacks, then gives JSN, JSN gives five, six. whatever. Right. Yeah, they're not making it out of there. You just, top six is solidified. Right. So the rankings didn't really change all that much coming into this. You know, I I had uh, Swift was third in points per opportunity, which is a pretty wild stat. Right. There. I had JSN, and then. Zay Flowers and Addison and kind of Johnston floating maybe a little bit by himself and he could get up into that tier. Well, well, Johnson's definitely back up into that tier for me here. The landing spot is great. Um, and I think, you know, what he can provide the Chargers, they kind of got somebody, they got a guy who can do, three guys who can do three different things. Keenan's a little older. Um, they did, they did, they do have Palmer and they did draft uh, Davis at a TCU a little later who's also a speedster. Uh, but Quentin Johnston gives them, you know, a nice big run after the catch ability. You pair him up with an elite quarterback, um, and and I'm I'm and and Kellen Moore, uh, now moving over from Dallas. You know, the ability to scheme and create opportunities for those receivers and have just three just beasts across the, you know, Mike Williams is that big kind of go up contested catch gnarly uh, guy can be a big red zone guy for you. You know. We all know what Keenan Allen is, and Quentin Johnston gives you, uh, who can be knocked for not being playing up to his size, maybe in the contested catch category, which Mike Williams can kind of give you and maybe mentor you a little bit in. And then on on top of that, you know, you see, I I would agree with that, but but none of those guys have the yak ability that Quentin Johnston has. He's he's a big guy, as much as he's a big guy or a, a big guy that doesn't play big on those contested catches, he's a big guy who plays small in the best way possible with the ball in his hands. You know, there's not too many guys that move like that once the ball is in his hand and he's, you know, continuing on down the field. So I, I think that's a really, really good pick for them. I thought it would be Dalton Schultz for them, but it was Quentin Johnston. And I think that's, I think it's a great pick for, for Seattle or uh, for the chargers and for Quentin Johnston's stock. Cause he was a guy who was, he was falling, he was falling a little bit. Yep, people um, were mad that the, they were floating out there that he might not be a first round pick anymore. The, the slow forty at his pro day, people already didn't kind of like him. You know, you get bigger guys. Matt Wallman comes on and crushes him for his hand placement and stuff, and um, it just it started to build up everywhere you hear people hating on Quincy Johnson. You felt a, a falling off for him, and maybe even a value. And now, nope, he was the twenty first overall pick. Uh, second wide receiver off the board 
which it did go, I think it went boom, 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 boom. All four of them went like right in a row, yeah, right? Yeah, 20, 22, 23, 24. So. so, yeah, one player between JSN and Quentin. But God landing spot, anybody that went to, you know, I was just hating on the Chargers because I hate the way they handled Eckler. But I knew anywhere, anybody that went there, their stock was going up, whether that be a running back, tight end, or a, obviously wide receiver. Now, looking at the contracts, uh, so both, you know, Mike Dub and Keenan are there guaranteed for this next year. And then in 24, they both have outs in their contract, but like Keenan's dead cap hit is 11.6. And I think Mike Williams is like 12 and a half. So like you're going to eat a bunch of money if you cut one of these dudes, which they were already talking about potentially cutting Keenan, but he had a $24 million dead cap this year. There's like, no, that's why they couldn't cut Keenan. Yeah, um, and they're going to have to pay the quarterback, so they'll have to figure something out. Um, so I don't know if, it, based on the money, both those guys could definitely potentially be there next year. Yeah, and I, they're not, they're not, that offense tied to Herbert, you're not questioning anything. Like, you might question a little bit of JSN with the Seahawks. I'm not questioning anything uh, like that with the Chargers. You got elite quarterback production. You have Kellen Moore, who's a, a, a good schemer, and you have a, a coach who is, head coach who's very uh much pass first uh analytical mindset they'll go for it a lot more on on fourth downs and and all that kind of stuff and now you have three beasts along that line and and mike dub and keenan allen both have not been the most healthy guys so yeah i i, I love it for quentin johnston zay flowers next guy off the board one of our favorites maybe gets the least desirable landing spot and to some really hurt him to me to the naked eye, it's terrible. I mean, it, it, it's it's the stigma of what was going on there, but that was the Greg Roman stink on that thing. I, a little I, Lamar, though, too, know, right? I mean, we just don't know. Like, Greg, Greg Roman's system gets stale. It gets fucking stale. It's awesome for a little while, and then it gets stale. Lamar, I believe, at Louisville was in a pro-style offense, um, which, which, the- which he did well in. And now you got Todd Munkin coming over, who's been calling plays for Georgia. He's been in the league before, went down to college, comes back. Um, and, you know, you could say, well, they have Bateman and they have Andrews and they just signed Odell. And it's like, all right, Odell's oldest old coming off two ACLs. And, you know, maybe he's great, uh, but it's one year deal. And, and we don't really know what's going to happen there. You know, Mark Andrews, that system could have been a little bit more built to be a little bit friendly to Mark Andrews. I'm not saying that that connection will be any really different in what they're doing. They'd be stupid not to use Mark Andrews. Um, But, you know, Bateman, we haven't seen anything. I think Bateman's a good player. We just haven't seen it. I'm still buying into Bateman. But Zay Flowers comes in and and in a year could be the, the number one dog in that in that system, in that offense. I mean, maybe he's maybe it's split with him and. Uh, Andrews a little bit and then Bateman's the you know the the second wide receiver or whatever and I like likely so you know when you look at the 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 offense as a whole I kind of like what the piece the parts and pieces that they have Dobbins is finally healthy they didn't really bring anybody else in they got Gus Um, so you know and Lamar's a, a good quarterback and and we're about to see what happens in this pro style offense moving forward because I think that offense was stale and I think everybody in the offense was kind of sick of it in general as well um now they were still winning ball games because lamar's awesome um you know now there will be a little bit more pressure on lamar probably to be you know a little less reliant on the legs but oh i mean he makes he makes some great throws he still makes some bad throws uh but you know he makes more good throws than bad throws and he get he puts your team in position to win ball games and zay is a guy who is a quarterback's dream like he can all he did was play with shit quarterbacks his entire career and just produce, 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 produce. Um, and and it's, there's so much versatility um, and the yak ability is awesome. The double moves are awesome. The route running is good. He could play inside or out. Um, so, oh, yeah. I mean, he's a, that's so that's the takeaway, I guess, for me is that he is a very versatile guy. You can get him involved in the run game. You can hit him with sweeps and end arounds and screens and you can. He can play in the slot, and he I think he can play outside, and he can win intermediate and take you deep because he's got speed, and it's just every time he gets the ball in his hands, it's wheels up. You're excited. You're on the edge of your seat. What the fuck's about to happen because he's so good and so electric that that, that, that bodes well for him to go anywhere. Can they get him in space? Can they scheme him the ball? Obviously, they spent some capital on him. Who has, you know, the stigma is, man, bummer, you know, Lamar Jackson, Baltimore Ravens, 
beat you up, run it down Stay your throat. Stay on offense. Right. Run Not first. a lot of passing. But, like, who has Lamar really had to throw to? Bateman can't stay healthy. They tried to throw him some some help there. Right. And then I, I think Hollywood, maybe Hollywood, when Big healthy, Coke, was good Crushing, there. right? And then Mark Andrews just steady slaying because who else is he going to throw it to? And right. even likely was getting in the mix, you know? Right. Like, and and I think the most pressure is on Lamar to stay healthy, but we just paid you all this money. Yeah. Finally, you got your money. Now you better fucking play. You know what right. I mean? I think I think the rest of it will take care of itself. Yeah. He's never had anybody good to necessarily throw to. Hollywood, great drop right there. He was crushing it before he got traded. Went healthy, um, went uh, healthy. but had had great runs there. And I and you, we just you just you're not, you can't compare things right now. You, you can, it's not the same. Yeah. We're going into something compl- a new era of offense over there. That is is gonna look a good bit different. So I, you can't get too caught up in saying this, this isn't the same Baltimore system that all that other stuff was going into, um, and they couldn't find the receiver. I promise you, they found a receiver in Zay Flowers. Yeah. Um, so does this? Uh, how much does this move the needle for you we'll in look, these rookie let's, drafts? Let's let's go into the next guy, and then we'll we'll kind of come back to Zay uh, here for a minute. Jordan Addison. Uh, a lot of people were pretty down on him. It seemed like a lot of guys we talked to were kind of down on him. Nobody really loved him all that much. He fell out of favor a little bit. I feel it like seemed... he just got, he wasn't sexy anymore. Like the pizzazz right. has worn off right. a little bit. Because he, he didn't go to USC and, and crush it and was and hurt. And the weight and in the combine was, was light. So that kind of left a little bit. Um, and he didn't like blow out the 40. You know what I mean? Like right. it just, uh, recency bias is such a strong factor in dynasty fantasy football, which is wild. Cause like, why'd you get into playing dynasty? If you're going to let recency bias affect your, your, the way you do things in right. a great manner. He, he's a, a fair amount of ways removed from the Bolitnikoff award with Pitt, you know, and playing with Kenny Pickett and just lighting it up and being unstoppable yeah. and, and he, had flashes at USC and sure. got banged up a little bit. Right. Like had a weird tackle and missed some games, still gutted it, came back. Like, I mean, Right. No, I mean, uh, strong player. This is this is a, a great landing spot. perceived much better landing spot than Zay Flowers. Um, and I, I think that's fair. Uh, you know, you go to a, a good offensive system. You see, you've seen Justin Jefferson really flourish. You've seen Adam Thielen really flourish in here. You saw Hawkinson immediately flourish going over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and Kirk, as much shit as Kirk takes, he could facilitate. He could get it done. How long does Kirk stay there? I don't know. Oh, he's but, a big but, wiener for this draft. Kirk, Kirk can hang around he can get you what you need to get to and you know i think i think it's correct i i think zay could be the leader of your offense wide receiver wise i don't know that jordan addison can but he doesn't need to be and this is a very good he's an an outstanding batman or outstanding robin to jefferson's batman um and i think that's going to be a filthy duo for a while so if you want to say I'm taking Jordan Addison over Flowers, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, I I, I like Jordan Addison. I, I you know I was never down on Jordan Addison. I thought he was good. We're in our first live rounds firing off uh, rookie draft here, and Jordan Addison uh, went before Zay Flowers and at one seven, and we're at one ten right now, and and Flowers hasn't gone off the board. It's been right. uh, Gibbs, JSN, Addison. Quentin Johnston and A-Chain have been the guys, uh, non-quarterbacks and non-Bichons off the board uh, there. So, you know, Addison does does get the bump. Would he, would he have, if Zay Flowers landed there, it would have been, Zay Flowers probably would have been the next guy off the board. So, mm-hmm. you know, I kind of understand it a little bit, but I'm keeping those guys in the same tier. If you want to, if you want to in that tier, now flip-flop uh, Addison and Flowers, that's cool with me. I mean, I, I you know, I wouldn't. I'd be I'm a huge flowers proponent and I like to say I'll stick to my guns, but it, it would be a little bit more hard pressed for me to not pull the trigger on Addison over flowers. Uh, but I also wouldn't mind uh, maybe a trade back to get a get paid and take flowers. Um, so, yeah, I, w- I would like to have a little bit of both of them. You know, you're in enough rookie drafts. You sure. might get 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 lucky enough to grab either one. Uh, I don't know who I necessarily I had him in a tier two I think Quentin Johnson jumps back into that tier if he fell out of it for you yeah and you want to take Quentin Addison or Flowers I'm not I, I don't think I can make a too strong of an argument against you either one of those guys that you want to take yeah no I, I think I think Quentin Johnson and Addison got a nice little bump in this draft to, mm-hmm. to kind of boost them back up and the Flowers haters were out there but you know, I think a lot of people were buying in and liked him, and now that he got the first round capital, and some guys said there's no way. Man, uh, there was no way he wasn't. Right. And the only question was, was he going to be the first wide receiver off the board? Right. And because if some of that floated, 
I can see people, the haters being mad at the Baltimore Ravens landing spot. I could see like people. If you who already didn't to be like him, and you're you don't you don't like the you, if you already didn't like him, you probably don't like the landing spot. So he's dead to you. So he. But even if you did like him, you cheaper. might not like sure. the landing spot. Sure. And you're trying to say maybe not so fast on that. I, I would certainly pump. I can't. I can't. How can you say that for sure right now? We can't. Um, Look what happened, Casey. Yeah. Um, so the last first round. Uh, Skill position player was Kincaid and a great uh, bump, huge bump for him. I think uh, he's basically, I think, solidified himself at the you know one nine to one twelve in every rookie draft. That's tight end premium. Uh, should add that caveat, which right. is mostly all I play in, um, because why wouldn't we be trying to add value everywhere we can to have more fun and more players? Yeah. Um, so Kincaid is a guy who could come in there and and you know they kind of occupy that slot a little bit for them boys and, and be you know. The Kelsey to uh, Josh Allen's, uh, you know, career here and really, really help them out. And they, they traded up for him. You, everyone's seen the video by now of them moving up ahead of Dallas to go ahead and get him. Um, you know, and I think I think that's a great pickup. I think that's firmly planted him as the tight end one in this class right now. Um, you know, you can go off draft capital or whatever and you could say, hey, I'll you could do the echo chamber of just draft your. Don't drop the tight ends and buy him next year, but nobody's selling you Dalton Kincaid next year. It ain't happening. They're not selling you him. He's not coming to you. You, you could trade him a first next year, unless Dalton Kincaid goes out and and tears his Achilles. You there's you not get. You could trade a first round pick next year for him, and you're not getting him. Um, he's just locked into a great situation with a great quarterback, and he's uh, already established as a really good pass catcher. Um, so you know he's gonna he's gonna really take on a big role there and. How could you not be excited for that? Um, so, you know, I think I think I'm really really excited about Kincaid, and I have oh, absolutely no reservations of taking him in the first round of a tight end premium rookie draft. Yeah, he's uh, it's basically a slot receiver. He's saving the end of this first round in your draft, basically. I think like right. We'll get to Charbonnet here in a second, but it's yeah. definitely less fun to take him, and it's it's pretty fun to take Kincaid. You know, yeah. they needed, they had a hole and they filled it in the tight end spot. So huge, huge, uh, huge for them. They kind of, they ca- seemingly almost killed two birds with one stone. We needed a receiver and, and a we needed end. a tight end and we kind of got a little bit of both here. So yeah. I think that was a great move for them. Nice move up uh, by uh, being yeah, and there. They, and they watched, they watched the top four wide receivers get taken off the right board in right in front of them. And then got ahead of Dallas. So like, you know what? Let's go. He ahead said that he he said that the 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 GM said that he thought that that the Chargers were going to take him, so he didn't think they could get him. And once they didn't, they called Jack. They started calling to get on the phone with Jacksonville, trying to get ahead of Dallas. Uh, so they got Kincaid. All right, let's move into the second round here. Uh, we got one quarterback in the second round. We got one running back in the second round. We got one, two, three, four wide receivers and one, two, three, four, five, uh, fifth, five tight ends uh, in the second round here. So. You know, Will Levis goes obviously right as that draft cranks back up day two. Um, now hold on a second here. Them boys couldn't just get into the end of the first and get that fifth year option. That is so weird to me. You couldn't. Yeah. You couldn't work out something to I mean, get maybe, that thirty first pick. Maybe nobody really wanted to, and they didn't want to overpay. Whatever, that's fine. I mean, but they yeah. moved up here to get him, right? They did move up a little bit, I think, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, I think they were picking out eleven. So they didn't want to move up a little bit maybe more. Maybe no, maybe nobody wanted them. Maybe maybe Kansas City wanted to pick who they wanted. Maybe uh, who, maybe Philly wanted Nolan Smith. Maybe they didn't want to trade out of there. Um, and then the Saints, you know, maybe they could have traded with them. I don't know, but strange, yeah. right? I don't know. I, I thought for a quarterback I thought it, to go two two. I thought it would happen, but you know, I mean, I think Derek Carr was a second round pick. Jalen Hurts obviously a second round pick, so it can yeah, work. Like a late two, Whatever. not an early two. Good for good for Tennessee for getting a guy. Um, he's not my favorite, but he's certainly going to be in the first round of Superflex rookie drafts. Um, he good he, landing spot. We just did a mock. I think he went ten, maybe. Um, so you know, it's not certainly not the worst landing spot. I like Tennessee. Um, I know a lot of people were down on Tennessee last year after some players went there and were like, ah, what the, what the hell are they doing? New GM. I like the head coach. They don't give a fuck about what everybody else says you have to do and how you have to do it. Uh, they find ways to get it done. Levis, you know, them them going up and getting them, it's a team I feel confident about being able to, you know, they fucking made Ryan Tannehill into a thing. Um, 
and, and he was very, very productive for a while. He took them to the playoffs multiple times and, and was on the cusp of, of getting even further than they did. Um, so they need a little bit of a revamp here. Uh, their, their O line, a little bit of D, um, uh, but, uh, Will Levis needs some going there. I think, I think, uh, you know, Tannehill probably ride out the year for most of this year, unless they, unless they facilitate a trade or something, but, uh, you know, Will Levis probably stayed in the first round of your well, super flex drafts here. Isn't the most healthy, so sure he gets banged up. Right. He runs around a little bit, you know. But I, I, I don't hate it. Um, it's not the worst, and he stayed out of the first round, which is kind of nice, you know. Yeah, nobody forced it, right? And yeah, I mean, I said on probably a couple of shows that I would didn't really want to take Levis, but if Tennessee took him, then I would have to reevaluate because I like that organization and the ability to be successful. So right. They did. They did go up into the top of the second and get them. Give up stuff to to go from eleven to two, and uh, it's just a good organization, good culture. They all they get randomly shit on for no reason. Like, oh, there's well, a dumpster they, fire. They like, get shit on by people who don't view them as doing it the way that 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 you quote unquote should do it, or the you know the new wave in the mix. They're in every and, game. Like they. Right. They muddy up those games, and they and they, they were they were hurt and banged up. And last they, yeah, year they have and, so many injuries; it's right. wild. Like so, I, they still made the playoffs. No, they didn't. That was a year before yeah. when Henry was playing with his broken foot. Um. So, anyway, right? Um, they were starting Josh Dobbs. They almost made the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were picking eleventh. So, um. So the next pick is Charbonnet. Obviously, that was the bombshell that went off. It kind of you know potentially nuked two dynasty running backs which is not a great thing to be the, the more and more that we we think about that that's not an order there were some receivers that went in between there uh, but i just moved over to the running back category you know and the more and more you think about it it's it's not great for for kenneth walker it's not great for charbonnet uh you were hoping that charbonnet could firmly stay in your as your rb3 basically in this class that's where he was for me separately and, you know, you do your rankings pre-draft and then you adjust after draft for kind of what happened here. And, and you have to move him down some. Um, and you have to move Kenneth Walker down some. You can no longer draft Kenneth Walker in the third round of a Dynasty Superflex tight end premium startup. Uh, that's about where he was going for us in our mocks. Um, and I really liked him. And for these people out there who are fucking saying, well, you know, you should have traded Kenneth Walker. Like, oh, oh, okay. So, so we should have traded a second round pick, gets the capital, and then fucking produces at a crazy level, looks really good doing it. And, and so you should have traded that guy? Like, yeah, sure, if you're rebuilding, I guess trade him away. But, like, what, what are we doing? I don't understand that. Like, just, that's the biggest asshole, condescending schmuck comment ever. Like, it just stinks, man. It just stinks. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. That's what they wanted to do. They needed depth. Would I, would, would I have much rather seen you take Chase Brown in the fifth round instead of Charbonnet? Of course. Of course. That's not what the Seahawks wanted to do. They wanted two guys that can play. Kenneth Walker probably leads this backfield this year. Kenneth Walker had some injury, started the season injured, got a little banged up in season. They need another guy. They'd bring in Charbonnet. I mean, yeah. so you, you got to demote where you can get Kenneth Walker and you got to demote where you can get Charbonnet. I still will take both of them. I think for guys who are zero RB builders and guys who are hero RB drafters i think one of those two guys could really play a big role for you because there is going to be just a certain amount of people who just say they're fucking dead and they're done and yes zach charbonnet is in the dumpster fire category of because of where we had him and what we were expecting we don't like it but we need to shake that off and say this is still a good player in a potentially good situation where both of those guys can coexist you know when 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 Gibbs goes to uh, Detroit, you say, well, shit, we've seen Kamara and Ingram coexist in a good offense. I don't think many people are saying that. You'd have to remember something. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Like, that's a great point. I don't think anyone's remembering. Especially when Swift was there, you know, and before they traded him, you know, it's like, what can happen here? What are we doing? And it's like, well, there is some offenses that, that can coexist. You remember uh, uh Tevin Coleman and uh, Devonta Freeman, you mm -hmm. know, like uh, guys who who do different things. Those guys coexisted in an offense for a little while together there. Uh, they, they can be very useful. And, and if, if that's the style that Seattle wants to play, and they clearly do, uh, Seattle also does not give a fuck what you think. And mm -hmm. they're going to play how they want to play. Um, mm -hmm. no, clearly. They, they, they had a position of strength and they just added to it. Right. And they had it. They had they needed the depth. But yeah, they didn't, didn't need wanna, second round depth. You didn't want to see it go here. 
Uh, but you know, I, I guess I can sort of understand it. They clearly don't understand positional value. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, Seattle does not give a fuck. I mean, maybe maybe Charbonnet's think. got that good Adderall connect. I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's they're just like, let's bring him in. Um, but no, I mean, I think you got to demote. Adderall's like free, right? But mm-hmm. still interested in getting both Kenneth Walker, who we're not necessarily talking about right now, and Charbonnet on the team. You just got to demote and figure out where that spot is. I'm not 100% sure where I'm comfortable just yet. Like I said, we did a mock uh, that in our patrons. Uh, he still went in the first round. Um, he went 111. Um, mm-hmm. And we're like I said, we're in that other UDPL draft we're at 110 he has not gone yet so we'll, nah, we'll, we'll keep you going there abreast on that but i think you know early early two i think i'm fine with that one quarterback i think i'm fine late charbonnet uh, you know let's just scoop them up scoop up the talent see what happens let's one, one quarterback you definitely see what kind it. of uh coexistence we can get it stinks but i he's not dead and you need to adjust and figure out where that point is where the value is and and still be okay with taking charbonnet in that range let's move on to the wide receivers you got mingo going reed going rashi rice going and mims going so Ooh. mingo and reed i gotta i gotta go back and watch so i you know obviously the capital's good I can't. I, I know enough about both guys that I can't see me going Mingo anywhere in the first round uh, in a super flex tight end premium startup. Uh, I think he went two four in the mock we just did, um, and that seems fine ish to me. Um, you know, Kendra was off the board. A chain was off the board. Kincaid was off the board. Uh, Mayor Mayor went right before him. I'm fine with that. That 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 sounds all right with me just from the little I know. Now I could dive in and say, hey, that's got to go back a little further for me. But as of right now, from the from the little I know and what I've seen of him and heard of him, I'm okay with that. You like the capital, bigger guy, yada yada yada. They don't really have much. Um, Jalen Reed, that's a tough one because you got I like Dobbs and I like Christian Watson, and we don't really know where we're going uh, on that offense in Green Bay. Um. You know, he he goes uh, third three two in our mock that we just did, and I, I could see him ending up going a little earlier. But I feel like a lot of people are going to be a little hesitant on him now. Rashi Rice, you and I both really like him. He seems like a pretty divided guy um, uh, as amongst you know the people evaluators, analytics, and not. Uh, but I really liked what you saw from him. If you watched all the tape, he got some 22s. Uh, the, the the rumor was, and I think it's been confirmed, that he broke his toe at like the end of September and played all season last year and lost some of that explosion and movement that you see from him. Um, and then people were saying, you know, look, look like it was back a little bit near the end of the season. It looked like it was back maybe um, kind of at the Senior Bowl or at the Combine or wherever the hell he was. Um I really, you know, he goes to Kansas City. It hasn't really worked out super great for you drafting Kansas City wide receivers. Um, but he waited on Nicole after like four or five seasons. If I right, and, and to Sky off, Moore but. seemingly has a nice opportunity right here uh, to 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 grab a hold of something. Uh, but Rice comes in and he's at two nine in this mock we just did. Uh, I could see him being a, a little earlier than that in some I, drafts, but also right around there and a little later in some drafts. I had two six, and I definitely had him in my queue, and I wanted to see how far he would fall. I did that with my third pick, too. I didn't take who I wanted to take and, and was like, let's just see how far these guys are going to drop him because I, I would have been fine taking him at two six. Yeah. You know, at, right um, after Luke Musgrave went off the board and Mingo goes off the board, I had – Spears, Downs, Rice, Mims, Hooker. You know, it's a nice little spot there. I think most people would say you're taking Downs over him. And I think some people would say Spears. And I don't know there's a lot of people that are scared of the medicals that kind of came out on Spears. But I'm okay with taking Spears over him uh, there. Yeah, I took the running back. I took Spears. I liked him. I wanted to have a little fun. He's a fun player. Great landing spot. I love it. For but ten- Rice, love it Rice skyrocketing uh, oh, Rice. In, in this situation. Mm-hmm. I think sure. and especially general public that doesn't know a whole lot. They're mm-hmm. not going to care about what the evaluation was. They're just going to mm-hmm. see Kansas City round two. So I think general public Rashi's uh, value is going to get pushed up N- non super flex. Like he could he's going to be maybe even an end of the first uh, guy for a lot of people. Yeah. And then Marvin Mims to two to Denver analytical guys. Pants came off um, and just to Denver in a nice landing spot. You don't really Third know what's round capital. 
uh, second round. Second round, right into the right, second. Right yeah, at yeah. the end there. Slid in. Yeah. Um, so I like it. Good player. A lot of fun. And, and also really crushing some analytical models there um so wait 105 <laughs> you're uh i think i think denver got a nice player there uh they have sutton and uh jerry judy obviously but they seem to be okay with moving either one of those guys this off season so it seems like yeah, there's they tried some weird uh flux going on there and marvin mims is is sean payton's guy so it seems like he will have plenty of opportunities uh to be well worth the capital that you're going to invest in him uh, which again, it, it seems like a mid second would be just fine for me and super flex tight end premium for Marvin Mims as well. Yeah. So, I feel like I got to maybe not skyrocket him up, but I got to shoot him up. Yeah. I, I, for, for everybody that said this class stinks and this is dead and the landing spots stink. It's like, man, I, I'm like halfway into the second round here. And I, there's, I want, I want a lot of the guys that are, that came off the board on just about all these picks, man. Like I'm fucking down with them. Yeah. And that's all. What else can you fucking ask for out of a rookie draft? Being class? excited about the to middle be, to, to be, the get end to of the, the second, second to the, or the end of the second and still be having guys that you fucking like, man. Right. Like I, I just, it does kind of fall off after it that. It certainly does, but it kind of always does. Yeah. Like you could talk yourself into whatever. Yeah. But I mean, last year you were drafting Tolbert and, uh, you know, maybe you got Algier there, uh, but you were drafting the likes of Tolbert's and a bunch of guys that didn't even fucking play this year at the end of the second round. And you found gems, obviously, uh, through this third and fourth round. I'm drawing blanks on any of those other guys that were uh, kind of around that area. But, uh, you know, Zamir White's and, uh, you know, I'm drawing that more yeah. blocks, but if I sat here for a while, I could it's figure like out listening TD- to another song. With right. TDP right. TDP could have been there in some drafts or whatever. I'm listening to the 23 Spiller. song, not the 22 song. Right. Um, so uh, those are your kind of receivers there. And then a ton of tight ends. And I like Laporta to Detroit. I like mayor to Vegas. Laporta obviously skyrocketing. Well, now you're talking about this 22 class. That was a garbage class anyways, though. So yeah. obviously none of them picks were going to be any good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Laporta skyrocketing for sure. Mayer uh, probably staying about the same, probably firmly out of the first round for a lot of guys and suit and tight end premium, but right going to be right on that two, four to two, one, two, five area for a lot how of people, much, I think. How much does Josh McDaniels and Gronk weigh into this at all, if any? Yeah, I mean, just the capital trade up. Uh, came in and got Mayor Laporta went before him. Laporta went after him in this draft. One but, pick after before him. Yeah, I mean, I think, but Laporta, you know, nice in the NFL, potential yeah. fit in in Detroit there. So skyrocketing for him. Gonna have to figure out where I settle in on that, but still would take Mayor over Laporta. Um, Luke Muxgraves to uh, to Green Bay, and then they double dipped on tight end and came back uh, with uh, Tucker Craft in the next round, which was kind of strange, but you know, I guess trying to figure it out i don't i don't really know so uh but musgraves is an interesting guy and so is Kraft. so both of those guys are super interesting to me but we get into the third round uh if any of those guys are hanging around which musgraves went two five here but um you know i got no problem take Kraft didn't go until four eight in this premium draft that we're doing so it doesn't seem like maybe musgraves will get out of the second round but uh you could take the cheaper shot on Kraft a little later um, and then strange was another skyrocketer, um, from, from at the actual draft, which we, re- we talked about a little bit, uh, in our pre pre draft show, uh, about how we had heard from the draft pundits that strange was flying up the board there a little bit and damn it. Did he fly up that board? Um, now Evan Ingram, you know, is there for another year, probably good for strange, but you're also intrigued by how they just use the tight end in that system. Um, and Peterson coming from a long line of being decent at getting a tight end involved and being productive. Uh, so strange is definitely, uh, interesting to me. I can't act like I really know all that much about him. Um, every time I hear the word strange, I think of Bill sharp down the road, me and Ed were talking about something in the front yard, a neighbor of mine. And, uh, his neighbor is Bill Sharp, who used to be a Charleston, TV, Charleston TV anchor. And we said, I said something to my name, Ed. I was like, man, that's, that's strange. And out of like the bushes, Bill Sharp with his TV voice was like, you got to watch out for that strange. <laughs> I was like, touche. Strong Bill. move, Bill. <laughs> it's been using that for 30 years. 
He always comes driving by with his TV like wave. He's always like, "Hi, neighbor." I'm like, "You're not on TV anymore, Bill. You can turn it off." I'm Can't just take the, the TV out of the man. Yeah. <laughs> um, Got to watch out for that strange kids. Moving into the third round here, we get Hooker. <laughs> Speaking of strange, uh, to Detroit, which I like that landing spot. Yeah. Uh, you know, you get, you yeah. get, he gets to sit. Maybe even for two years. Maybe they, maybe they run it back with golf and and maybe it's a thong. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, where, where are we? Ta- I, you know, I took, I took him at two twelve. uh, here. I'll take a shot on hooker at, at the end of the second. Yeah. Mid to end of the second all day. End of the second, early third. Let me get that hooker. Uh, I like the landing spot gets to sit. I think it's a very advantageous, uh, position. He will be like 35 be by like, the time he gets to start, but, um, whatever. Uh, <laughs> Detroit, you know, brought golf right back around. Uh, you know, I think Hooker can be golf uh, at least. So we'll see what happens here. And then really this is where we get a big chunk of running backs. Um, and Finally. You know, we get Kendra, we get Tajay, we get A-Chain, and we get Tank Bigsby. Uh, Kendra Miller, like I said, going into this. It's a deep running back class. So, you know, you had I had my running back ranks. I floated them out there on Twitter a little bit and – you know, Spears and Kendra kind of hit and stay where they are. Sharps probably moves down a little bit. And I had Zach Evans up there with those guys, with, with Miller and Spears uh, below Charbonnet in, the, in their own tier. So you got to bump you got to bump Evans down for sure. Uh, but Kendra, I'm super fired up about that landing spot, man. I know, you know, if you were a Kendra fan and he got that landing spot, you're excited. And some people were automatically ready to tear down Kendra Miller and the third round landing spot to New Orleans, but I don't really understand why. I think he's a really, really good player, um, and I, I will be drafting Kendra. Um, end of end People of first. ready to tear him down. End of first, uh, you know, beginning of seconds all day long in super flex tight end premium, and then non premium and non uh, super flex first round for for Kendra for me. Yeah, I, I think early the. Th- Early, you said end of the first, end of the first, early second, and super flex, yeah, and premium. Yeah, he skyrocketed up to the Gotta top be. of that second Gotta round be. for sure. So, how, this is how this works, huh? People you, on Twitter, like, you got to find you got to have people that you don't like, and then when they get drafted, you find and make up a bunch of excuses why they won't be good. Oh, and you also can make up excuses why they got like, look, I like Evans, I don't know if we're going to get all the way down to the sixth round at this point. Uh, or wherever, and we'll, maybe we'll wrap some of those guys up. But I liked Evans, and and I will move down Evans in my rankings. I'm still going to draft Evans. I still like the fucking player that I scouted. But figure out where we can get him. If it's the mid third, I'm fine with that. The landing spot, yeah, the capital stinks, but the landing spot isn't terrible. You got the Rams. They have nothing on the depth chart besides Acres. I think Acres is good. Was kind of a little bit of a buy for me. Still fine with that. He's on his last year of his deal. Um, they may stink, and I think Evans can find a way to carve out a role. The, the the path to touches is there for Evans. It's possible. It can happen. I'm still fine with drafting him, but you got to bump him down. And some people are that didn't like Evans, he's dead. Or at draft capital people, if you didn't get top 50 draft capital, you're dead. I don't look at it that way. Um, dead to me. You know, I like Tajay Spears. If the medicals scare you, then don't draft him. I'll take him. Tennessee has all the same shit that every fucking Twitter doctor on here fucking has it really drains me that these fucking pts that fucking like my boat my wife could be doing this shit like she should like you guys come on here like you fucking know goddamn everything you're not involved with the fucking teams man like get the fuck out of here with that shit like oh thanks man shut the fuck up like (laughs) i don't give a fuck what you have to say let me hear what the, the fucking the Tennessee Titans just decided with everything that you know. They did they could, did they call you up and be like, "Hey man, did did uh, you think you think Tajay is going to last in this league?" You know, uh, no, they didn't. They they know everything you know plus more, and they decided to take Tajay Spears in the third round. Uh, does he have an ACL? Does he not? Heinz Ward didn't have one. He crushed it. Fucking Tajay Spears was out there fucking crushing it week in week out. He doesn't last have either year. of his ACLs. Just one. That's what they're talking about with Tajay. That the, the, the one the one guy on the one Twitter fucking DPT is out there is uh, t- saying that he doesn't have a fucking ACL. Yeah, I thought he had two tears, but it's to the same. Yeah. 
So he's basically saying that, you know, uh, well, he'll, he'll be, you know, and maybe and maybe he will be. Maybe in four years, Tajay Spears is fucking Todd Gurley. Maybe so. But he's a fucking running back, and you guys don't want running backs for more than two, three years anyway. So okay, dump him before how the much is he contract. going to play right now? And, and he, he managed to get through uh, a season at, at Tulane. Looking uh, mighty fine. Looking, the, the way he was moving was crazy. I'm fine with taking Tajay Spears. Uh, all day long in the second round. Uh, I, obviously, I liked him. If you didn't like him, you're going to keep fucking knocking him down and you're going to say, hey, look at this ACL. So, uh, you know, does it give you a little pause? Sure. Uh, before I read anything of Twitter doctors, I could do my own research and be like, yeah, it's not great when you see this going on. But then you watch him on tape and you go, damn, this guy's moving fucking crazy. Uh, you know, I start to get worried when it's bone on bone. And how much bone on bone is going on? I don't know. Nick Chubb had a terrible ACL tore everything in there and he's still rolling um so you know interesting there uh but then you get a chain who for me soars up the board i know some people probably already had him up there Mm -hmm. um but going to miami getting in that zone scheme getting speed on speed on speed gee you're getting let me think you're getting i'm sure quality you're getting quality mind uh quality scheming handpicked by those guys um and so, you know, you, you, they, they've, he can probably operate a little bit like Mostert. He's not going to break tackles like Mostert can because he's obviously not as big as Mostert can. But uh, he, can, he, can, he, can, he runs well in that zone scheme. Um, he's a good pass catcher. Um, and they have their, their running backs are basically the same running backs they had last year. Mostert, who's never been healthy through a season, really. Jeff Wilson, who's really never been healthy through the season, and Miles Gaskin. So, Steady old Miles Gaskin, but yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, A-Chain, he's, you know, got to be a first-round pick, I mean, for the most part. I yeah. think. I think so. I mean. Went one nine in this. He's got to got be late uh, for me, you know, probably 110, 111, 112 for the most part. I'll, I'll, take, flowers in there. I'll take all those wide receivers for sure. Kincaid. And then we'll see what we do with Charbonnet and maybe Kincaid. And so, you know, end of the first. A-Chain over early, Charbonnet. Early second. Um a Shane over Charmaine. <sighs> it would seem like he probably should. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't love the size. You know, you're he's a bit of an outlier in that regard, which is why he was kind of outside. Right, fine, fine. I'm one twenty six. Which is why he was kind of outside of my bubble. I didn't know what to do with him, but now you're, you're excited about it. Um, so I'm excited about it. We'll see where it, it does kind of fade into place. And then Tank Bigsby, who was a favorite of mine, goes to Jacksonville and the. The, the uh, ETN haters were out in full force about the best running back in Jacksonville is now Tank Bigsby. All right, bud. Let's fucking settle down. Uh, ETN's, so I can't go on Twitter. <laughs> ETN's fucking awesome. I can't awesome. go on Twitter. Stop it. But Tank Bigsby's good. They clearly want two guys in a rotation over there. That's That that seemed to be what they wanted to do. They, had, they brought in Hasty from the Niners in the middle of the season, and he was still getting some burn. Uh, so... It's clearly what they want to do. They just added a third round running back who is very capable. They do very different things. Um, Tank can can bang it for you, but he can also hit home runs. He can make you miss and also a very underrated pass catcher. Um, so for the underrated part, that all sounds like Travis Etienne. Uh, but, you know, but he's he doesn't he doesn't operate like etn operates they move their movement and the way they play is, I think, completely oh. different than one another. Movement. Um, but. You know, I like it for Jacksonville, and I'm st- I, I I will be drafting Tank Bigsby um, without any any problem. So you know, all these all of a sudden were were what we were kind of saying. Um, I those middle seconds, whole lot of fun uh, to to sell be, them all. To be grab, you know, JB Smiths, JB mid. says JB says sell them all. I say. Fuck the noise, buy them all. Let's go. Let's take some shots because there's going to be a lot of fun ones. When you can get Mims and Bigsby and Spears and maybe Miller and grab all those guys and have some fun, maybe you grab another tight end in there, maybe Laporta. You know, a lot of fun fucking stabs through here. Rashi Rice. Um, so, you know, and then we move to the fourth round. There's a, uh, uh, well, I guess we should talk about some of these third round wide receivers Tank Dell, Jalen Hyatt. Cedric Tillman, Josh Downs, Michael Wilson, and uh, Trey Tucker. Uh, Dell goes to Houston. Giants get Hyatt. Cleveland gets Tillman. Downs goes to Indy. Wilson goes to Zona. Trey Tucker goes to Vegas. As well, uh, you, you could throw Josh Downs right in that mid to late second round pick, and I'm fine with that. I love that landing spot. Very, very good landing spot. Third round pick. I think he gives you, again, something that you don't have over there um, and a, a nice little fit in. Uh, for what they could be trying to do. 
Yeah, if he could just be healthy, Paris Campbell, you know. Which right. Obviously, I think not Cody's as big as settled down on the. Obviously, not as big as Paris Campbell, uh, player but, in the game, but. <laughs> uh, uh, but Cedric Tillman to Cleveland is interesting with DPJ there. Maybe maybe he'll be out of there, and you know, Amari's a little older, and David uh, David Bell. Maybe not working out. So another shot on Tillman, which we all really like. A little bit bigger guy. Hyatt to the Giants. I think that's that's a pretty best case scenario for him. I'm super glad he didn't go in the first round because I was tired of fucking hearing about that. Uh, but, you know, Hyatt's probably not going to be on my team. But if he falls far enough, I think Tank Dell could be somebody who's on my team a decent amount because he he's already hanging around in these drafts. And to Houston, yeah, that seems like that wide receiver is kind of wide open. He's very small as well. He is very slight. Um, and he but, did, but you know, another savage, guy that you like, savage route runner. Yeah, just movements, just out, out of, out, out off the charts. Uh, so yeah, we were in this rookie mock, and I, I had three six, and he was on the board, and then I was like scrolling down, I saw Xavier Hutchinson, and I'm like, he went there too, but how can I take him over Tank Dell, who they clearly prioritized in a major right. way, draft capital wise, so. I was like, ah, fuck it. We'll, we'll go with Dell here in the mid-third. What are we doing in the mid-third? Right. So we get a couple more tight ends. Washington finally goes to Pittsburgh, which is a little weird considering Frymouth. But Frymouth also not super healthy um, all the time. Tucker Craft, like we said. And then San Francisco takes uh, the Alabama uh, tight end, Cameron Latu. Uh, so uh, then fourth round, bunch of quarterbacks, Hayner, Bennett, O'Connor, uh, O'Connell. Uh, so, you know, Get, giving you a little hope for some late round super flex quarterbacks there. And then the only running back taken is Roshan, which muddies things up over there. Uh, you know, Herbert not taken by this regime. They bring in Foreman with this regime. So we don't really exactly know what's going to happen. Not the worst thing to ever happen to uh, Kendall or, uh, or Herbert Khalil. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could look at it it's, again, any way you want to look at it. If you like Herbert, Herbert's <laughs> going to dominate that backfield and take them all. If you don't like him, regime didn't draft him. They brought in Foreman with the regime. They just drafted Roshan. His days are numbered. You know, it's probably going to be a fucking full blown committee. Like if that's what I had to guess was going on there, they're going to use all this. It's, those it's probably wide open. Who's going to take the right. reins? Uh, it's right. probably like not the worst. It's not really the worst. Probably cheap for little backfield to to lock down from all accounts. Like right, you're in a startup. You know, it's not the worst Roshan landing spot either. No, not not at all. So, um, you know, not not skyrocketing, but not dumpster fire for Roshan. Uh, kind of mid. Uh, Jesus, uh, get out of here. So, uh, um, go. so fourth rounders, <laughs> you know, not too exciting in the, uh, in the skill category. And then fifth rounders, again, some more quarterbacks, um, go, which, you know, probably not too excited about any of those really. Um, maybe you pick them up UDF, UD undrafted free agents in your, maybe you got draft the end of, so end you of fourth round or DTR. you have a longer, right. You have a longer, you go fifth, sixth round in rookie drafts, pick up some of those guys. Uh, but then you do get some more interesting running backs. You get Ab uh, Abana Kanda going to the Jets. You know, you don't know what's exactly going to happen there, but, you know, probably a little bit more of a dumpster fire landing spot than you wanted for Abana Kanda and for the running backs in this class. Um, but, you know, yeah, Brees mean, is going to be slow to come back. Michael Carter is, you know, probably uh, just going to be a rotational. Well, I never hear Michael little, Carter's name again because it's little just bit like no one could be any good because of Michael Carter. I right, hate it. Right. Um, so... You know, Chase Brown, who I really like, gets a nice landing spot um, in in Cincy. Cincinnati. And we don't know exactly know what's going to happen with Mixon, but really no other competition there. They lost to Maje, uh to Denver. And so I, I really like that for Chase Brown. He, he was high on my list and he, he will still be a guy who gets on a lot of my teams. Eric Gray to the Giants. Um, Matt Foreman owes me a, owes a pie to the face because I won that bet. Um uh, you know, not not the worst spot for Gray there. Which go check out on Twitter. There's a video of Casey taking I a did pie. Take, to the face. I did take the pie. It was pie Mageddon. Did did uh, uh did Al make that pie or no? No. Okay. Bought it. It was a little chocolate silk or something. It looked good. How was it? Was, it? it wasn't bad. Did you get a second one to actually no, have a piece no, or no? Did Such not. a waste of a pie. Huh. You gotta just do the whipped cream pie. No, it was so good. It was it stuck to my face. That's exactly what we wanted. We <laughs> we wanted a good a good oh, you pie, should have let me be there to film cream. it. I could have got all up in there, and I didn't need you there to film it. It doesn't need to be filmed like that. It's a, it's just mm -hmm. a nice bet that's paid off, and and it was spontaneous and nice and good to go. Got to um, got to get your boy behind the camera. Some, I, I, some audio. I do, I do not. Uh, it's not for that intense. It's for paying off a bet. 
Uh, so Evan Hall. And for the content. Yeah, and we got the content. Huh. I got a 20-second video. That's all you need. You don't need a whole my thing video, of My production. video would have been better. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. It Bigger. wouldn't have changed anything. It wouldn't have changed a goddamn thing with the video. Evan Hall goes to Indianapolis, so Derek Brown, your dreams are dead. Uh, <laughs> he was a big Evan Hall guy. I had him ranked really high. Um, so then... <laughs> You gotta stay off Twitter. <laughs> Me? Everyone. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, then you get a couple more tight ends here. Tennessee takes one. Uh, Indianapolis takes one. Tampa takes one. Dennis Allen to the Rams, your boy from Clemson. Um, so that's kind of fifth round guys there. Uh, and really, other than that, you know, some other guys, notables are again Zach Evans. We talked about him. Uh, Chris Rodriguez Jr. goes to Washington. You know, Gibson's on his way out after this year. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're, they're getting a little depth there. Deuce Vaughn to Dallas is basically the worst running back you could have had to go to Dallas that you were hoping that you'd get good value from. I think Deuce Vaughn's a good player, but like, what are we doing here? Like, I, I don't, I just, it's going like, to sign Zeke back. It seems like that's a very big, a cheap Zeke coming back could be a potential. Um, and it's no hate or shade on Deuce Vaughn, but like you could, there were so many running backs that could have went there that would have made this a much more interesting pick mm -hmm. uh, and landing spot, but it didn't happen. Uh, and Zach Evans to the Rams, which we already kind of talked about. And then Dwayne McBride to Minnesota. That's going to be an outstanding late round grab and stash. I mean, McBride's a, a really solid pure runner. And just because he didn't catch doesn't mean he can't catch. Um, that, he might not can though, right? What was it like? I have no idea, but it just doesn't matter. Like it's, he caught like nine balls or six balls total. Total, mm. whatever. I mean, fucking Kenny Walker caught. Where's nine. the threshold on that? Kenny Walker caught nine in he like can, one season. He can catch. No, I think it was nine. No, it wasn't yeah, a lot. I think it's sixteen. Or it doesn't matter. Like it's just the fact that you're fucking coming on here and saying that a college level athlete who's this good at doing something can't figure out how to catch a fucking football is absurd. But did you because know the threshold? Yes, I know the threshold. Six balls, he's a seventh-round player who I'm sure if he needs <laughs> yeah, to catch he's balls, dead. What he can catch players, but he's a good player. So a you seventh should, round. You should put him on your team. There's also a path to fucking touches. They've been talking about getting rid of Dalvin Cook. They re-signed Alexander Madison. Uh, but, you know, who knows what happens there. But Dwayne McBride is, is an interesting player. And then McIntosh to Seattle for a little more depth. And Nichols the third to Green Bay. Um Five career receptions. And then Butte to to New England is, uh, is a nice little landing spot there for him. Um, I think that's exciting. Parker Washington to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, you know, they, they've got a lot of receivers going on right now, but that could be a nice little guy waiting in the wings there. A.T. Perry to New Orleans. I know a lot of people are interested in him. Elijah Higgins is an interesting one. He's a receiver, but he's going to convert to a tight end, which is kind of odd to me because it would seem like what they were looking for was maybe somebody who could do a little bit more blocking for him since for some reason Gasecki couldn't get on the field. And if you're going to convert a wide receiver to tight end, it seemed like you're getting something similar to Gasecki. But this guy moves a little better laterally, uh, obviously, than, than Gasecki. But it seems like the conversion is on. So he'll be a nice – he'll be a guy that I'm, I'm always interested in those, those guys that are kind of going to take on something different and, and maybe change over. Uh, and Elijah Higgins and then Xavier uh, Xavier Hutchinson I think that's a great landing spot just the capital wasn't as good as you wanted it to be uh, to Houston but again that's wide open uh, and I will be putting Xavier Hutchinson on I'll trade in to whatever spot I need to trade in to put Xavier Hutchinson on my on my teams there uh, so uh, Grant DeBose goes which was a favorite of ours favorite of uh, Riley Bymaster uh, Ronnie Bell to San Francisco and then a bunch of uh, dudes who I've never heard of uh, in the seventh round for wrapping that up uh, and then tight ends Koontz and Willis uh, Jets in San Francisco so that's basically going to wrap that up um, you got anything else you want to add Kenneth Walker had 19 receptions okay so irrelevant the threshold case I don't know what it is it I'm just sure doesn't matter it's like it really doesn't matter it's so irrelevant I heard Kenneth Walker couldn't catch and it turns out he can so no I just because they brought in Charbonnet care. duh yeah sure I mean, whatever. That must. You should have known better with case, Kenneth Walker. Yeah, should have. Should have. Case case is closed. Um, Y'all didn't watch him play. So this year, <laughs> you know, you got to edit your rankings a little bit after this. You can't just hold fast. There, there. You got to adjust. I still like Evans, but you can't have him up high. I still like Charbonnet. You can't have him up high. Uh, you know, if you like Miller and Spears and A Chain, you, you're excited. You throw him up higher. Uh, so 
It's kind of how this should work. You should be fluid. You should be. Uh, and then some of these guys might get taken off my board because they rise too high and I don't want to invest that. So you got to find where those thresholds are, where the value is still right. And then there will be doing plenty of mocks and figuring out maybe where some trade back spots are uh, and, and those good zones. I like that everybody's already figured those out. And it's like, wow, we haven't, nobody's been like, you, I don't understand. Like you could think you have figured it out, but the public hasn't gotten involved yet. And the big guys who are going to drive value, the big uh, pundits of fantasy spewing fantasy knowledge to get out there and drive value, haven't gotten really out there to drive value. In the next couple of weeks, you're going to see things move. And then, in the, and then even when you draft later, you're going to see preseason camp hype, all those things all move around. And so, you know, don't get... Don't get too tied down to thinking exactly where you think you know where everyone's going to go and trade. But I also saw a guy today that said trading while you're on the clock is the worst way to do it, which is the absolutely incorrect take there. That's like the, <laughs> maybe at three three, but like <laughs> that's someone mad that someone's taking a while on the clock. I guess. I guess That's the, it's not the best time necessarily, but it is a strong time it is, to facilitate it is, a trade. It is almost like, always the best time. We to have make like a trade. this time to make a trade. Do you want to come up and get your well, guy? It's, it's or, now it's final. It's right. happening. You can either get this guy now or you can't. Right. Like that's it. There is no more speculation yeah. of where these guys are going. The board is starting to play out. And yeah. do you want this guy or not? Is, uh, you know, so now you can strangle some value out of some guys. So. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's do a little vets, and we'll get out of here. Just realize we both have the same T-shirt on. So, <laughs> what a couple of yeah, I don't, you can't schmucks. see. Schmucks. Well, I, I didn't notice it until I until I hit the close-up angle, and I was like, oh, there's a little left. I had a different right shirt there. on, but full disclosure, I had ice cream before we started. <laughs> oh, jeez. Spilled it all myself. Child. Yeah, my three-year-old did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one to talk. I eat like a child, as well. I gotta. Spaghetti night. I'm taking my shirt off because I don't want to get ruined. No. I appreciate y'all for joining us. Let me get that subby. Let me get a five star review on the iTunes or the Spotify's. Shout out to the patrons. Had a blast hanging out with them this weekend on the Discords. Uh, you missed out if you didn't come hop in that. Shout out to Big D. Maybe getting a little bit more Big D here in the near future. It's possible. It's, uh, you got to enjoy the Big D, but it's something you got to get used to. Yeah. <laughs> I usually look for a little V. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. But um, <laughs> um, but yeah, appreciate the patrons. We're, we got we are like I said, cited on here. We already got rookie mocks cranked up. We're about to be cranking uh, startup Start mocks back up, and we'll be doing live ones that you guys can get involved in. Um, and our ADP is so close, so so close. And as we're uh, getting back into the season, we'll be developing more and more and have a, a nice little... I got the pre-draft uh, ADP, but I'm about to get this program from my dude, and then I'll be able to just go forth and conquer with with right. it. So, uh, lots of fun things happening over here, so come join us, have some fun. We're putting the F... The F is for fun. We're putting the fun back in fucking Dynasty. Stay off Twitter. <laughs> we'll hug your loved ones. We appreciate y'all. Peace. Peace.